All right, fill in the blank time. Something I didn't see coming in week two was what, Shireen? Well, I think it was the obvious one, and I'm going to go ahead and eat my crow now, Mike. I'm the one that said the Panthers aren't going to make the playoffs, and I'm sure we're going to play that video at some point. It's saved somewhere, whoa, 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 but they look whoa, like a playoff no, no. team. You didn't say that the Panthers aren't going to make the playoffs. You said there was no chance I the did. Panthers would make the playoffs. So we need to be I'm... accurate. We need to be accurate. I, I, I'm backtracking. I'm eating crow, whatever it is. <laughs> I'm saying the Panthers have a good chance to make the playoffs. That defense is way better than I thought it was. I think that's the biggest thing. And Sam Darnold, perhaps he just needed a good team around him. His first 300-yard game since a game against the Cowboys in early 2019. He looks great. I have to admit it. And that was my biggest question about the Panthers was how was Sam Darnold going to play? He, he's done great. And they hold the Saints to 128 yards, which is the fewest in the Sean Payton era. In fact, it's the fewest they've had since five years before Sean Payton got to New Orleans. That's how good that defense is. And I think you're going to continue to see that defense to be really, really good. And we, we just – right off the Panthers defense it's a good defense and it's going to be one of the top defenses this year and that's only going to help Sam Darnold but he's with a good team he trusts everybody around him and they certainly look like a playoff team after the first two games I talked to Hassan Reddick after the game yesterday and they knew exactly what to do to Jameis Winston just get after him shut down the run force him to be the one to try to trigger the victory get him off his spot and you know with Jameis Winston if you get him to try to be like Patrick Mahomes and everyone realizes he's not Patrick Mahomes. He's perfectly good Jameis Winston, but when he tries to be Patrick Mahomes, that's when it all implodes. And we saw two ugly interceptions yesterday when he was trying to be Patrick Mahomes. Um, To me, the thing I didn't see coming was the Raiders beating the Steelers. And it pisses me off because I should have seen it coming because I did the math last week. I went back and looked at, The history recently, this is amazing. Now, Shereen, we grew up at a time when the Steelers were great and the Raiders were great. And in 1974, the AFC Championship, when the Steelers beat the Raiders, classic, out in Oakland, Steelers get to their first Super Bowl. The Immaculate Reception, two years early, they had some great battles all through that decade. Both teams were good every year. The uh, Raiders have not been good. And from 2006 through yesterday nearly every year of which the Raiders have stunk they're six and two against the Steelers who nearly every year of which since 2006 have been awesome what's wrong here six and two they're now up 17 13 in the all-time series I should have seen it coming I should have realized whatever it is whether it is the Piper being paid for the Immaculate Reception, whatever it is, the Raiders have the Steelers' number, should have seen the Raiders were going to beat them. I didn't realize that statistic. That is amazing because, as you said, the Steelers have not had a losing record since 2003. So for them to have a 2-6 and six record, is it, against the, the Raiders, it's is just yes. unbelievable. So, yeah, I I never would have seen that. I wouldn't have picked the Raiders to beat the Steelers, especially the way the Steelers played in week one. But they look like two different teams, Mike. Yeah, that Steelers offense needs some work still. And Ben Roethlisberger said so. It's a work in progress. It's a new offense, and it wasn't able to get it done yesterday. Sunday's biggest stud was who or whom? I think it's whom. Well, I'm I'm going to go back to Lamar Jackson a little bit because who needs running backs? They lost those three running backs, and Lamar just said, eh, I don't need a running back. 16 carries, 107 yards, two rushing touchdowns. He had both of the the last two touchdowns and the, the game winner there that we saw where he did the flip. But you know what? He passed for 239 yards and a touchdown, too. And I know he had those two interceptions to Honey Badger, but I thought overall he played a really good game. He's 0-3 against Mahomes, as we know. He's kind of gotten that ghost, uh, away, got that away, monkey off his back, however, whatever cliche we want to use. And, but he was good. He was the better quarterback, I thought, in that game yesterday. He played really, really well and carried the Ravens on his back. You could see what it meant to him. You could see. And yeah. forget about last week when he said, it's not about me versus right. Patrick. It is. Sammy Watkins the next day said, yeah, it really is. And on that last drive – when the Ravens use their first snap, Lamar kind of runs a couple of yards and sits down. I thought they're going to do exactly what the Giants did on Thursday night. They're going to take this gift 
and they're going to be too conservative with it. They're not going to go for the jugular. You can't give the ball back to Patrick Mahomes. You can't just make them burn their timeouts and play defense again and hope that you get another you know, well-placed yeah. hand on the football or guy in the right place at the right time. Get that first down. And it was third and long. If they don't complete that third and long pass, there's no way they're going for it fourth and long. It had to work out just perfectly, but they morphed in the course of that drive between second down and fourth down into a team that was willing to roll the dice. They did not start that drive like a team that was going to try to seize the victory. I think that's what made the decision in the moment to go for it so surprising because the whole vibe starting that drive was we were just content to get the ball back. We're content to make them use their timeouts. We'll be content to punt it back to them. And they didn't do that, Mike. And that was their own, to me, that was their only chance to win. And I think John Harbaugh knew that. He knew the answer to the question when he asked Lamar, do you want to go for it? He knew what the answer was going to be. And he knew that Lamar was going to pick that first down up. And he put the ball in his hands and he did it. And I, I think that builds confidence for that team and that quarterback. And this is going to be a team to contend with. I admit maybe I had some, some reservations, some questions after week one, but not after week two, the way they played. Uh, in that game yesterday. They were outstanding. All right. Uh, my biggest stud for Sunday was Tom Brady. Five touchdown passes. Mm -hmm. He's got 35 career games now with four or more touchdown passes. He's got a regular season streak of four games with four or more touchdown passes. He's closing in on the all-time record of 37, four touchdown-plus games, and five straight regular season games with four or more touchdown passes. The guy is unstoppable. Real quickly, most impressive loser in Week 2 was which team? Well, I thought it was the Chargers. I thought they should have beaten the Cowboys. Had two touchdowns called back, a 31-yard reception called back by a penalty. They ended up with 99 yards on 12 penalties, two interceptions in scoring range, and missed a field goal. They were the better team in that game, but they didn't win the game. And this is just so Charger-esque. The names have changed, Mike, but the result stays the same. Yeah, hopefully this doesn't become a trend for them. For me, it was the Vikings because they should have won the game, could have won the game, would have won the game yeah. if their kicker could have made a 37-yarder. I wonder if they'll stick with their kicker after yesterday. He missed the extra point that was the reason they were one point behind, missed the field goal that could have won the game. Most disappointing winner from Week 2 was which team, Shireen? Well, I'm going to go with the Browns because, as I said, I'm not convinced they would have won that game if Tyrod Taylor had stayed in the game, if he hadn't gotten hurt. They had two turnovers. Their running game kind of carried them. But I have questions about the Browns after two weeks. They need to play better than what they played the first two weeks, Mike. I'm going to say the Bears. They, they had that game won. When Roquan Smith intercepted Joe Burrow and took it to the house, it was 17-3. to The Bengals had no business getting back into that game. The final score, 20-17, to tells me that the Bears took the foot off the gas way too early and, and could have found themselves at 0-2. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.